Hi there. Today we're going to restore the chrome on a very rare luxury British car. This was a car made by Bristol Motor Company. Now they operated from just after the Second World War until I think they actually finished trading in 2020. This car is a Bristol 405 and these were made in the mid to late 1950s. This is in quite a state as you can see. We're going to go through all the processes where we're going to take this from the very rusty, crusty condition that it's in at the moment to a lovely, beautiful chrome finish. The first thing that we do is we list all of the job out and book it in. We take a picture of all the parts and that picture gets printed out and that gets put with the paperwork in a plastic bag to go round the workshop. The first job that we've got to do is remove all the old plating and rust from these. So what we're going to do is wire them up onto copper wires and then when we've done that we're going to pass an electric current through them but we're going to do it in the opposite direction to when we're plating things and that's going to remove the plating. time for the gloves to go on and now it's wired up we're going to put it into the stripper tank which is mostly sulfuric acid with a couple of other chemicals in it and there we go pass a current through it it's fizzing away after it's had enough time to remove the plating it's time for it to come out notice how that doesn't remove any of the rust So to remove the rust we're going to go into a tank of hydrochloric acid. It's the same acid that's in your stomach but a little bit stronger and that's going to remove the rust. So there we go, rust has been pickled off. Time to swill that off in water. These are now ready to be polished. If we take a closer look, you can see how the corrosion has bitten right into the steel. We're going to have to remove all of those marks. Here in the polishing shop is where most of the labour and hard work is going to go into there. So this is starting off on a really rough abrasive, it's an 80 grit and the first polishing operation is where we've got to get all of those corrosion marks out. It's a case of working over the whole of the workpiece evenly to get the marks out if you don't work in an even pattern then you're going to put loads of ripples and make problems that you can't correct at a later date. With all these sparks flying we've got to do a bit of slow motion 
because it looks amazing. Notice how long strokes are being used. You can't concentrate on one tiny area to get a mark out. If there's a particularly bad pit that needs removing, you've got to work in a large area, so you remove it all evenly. All the time here we are removing metal, so there does need to be enough metal in the bumper to allow you to take the marks out. Now you can see that after having gone all over the bumper with an 80 grit belt not all of the marks are out so this is only a work in progress and we're going to have to keep going over this until all those marks are gone. Now we're moving on to a 120 grit belt and all the polishing operations that we're going to do from now on are basically to remove the abrasive marks that we've just put in with that 80 belt. So we go over in a slightly different direction so that we can see that we've removed all of the previous abrasive marks on this operation. You also have to go around and do the edges because if not they'll be really rough. Now we've skipped a few grades of belt now. We're down to a 320 belt. So We've missed out, we've gone from a 120 that you saw before, so we've already done after that a 180 and a 240, and now we're down to the 320. Every operation at this point is very similar is that we're just removing the marks from the previous abrasives.
Now what's happening just here is we're using that worn belt and we're using this stone to glaze it off to give it a finer cut using a bit of grease to reduce the cut further as well and now we're doing what's called glazing so we're going to glaze this bumper all over and this should be the last but one polishing operation Now if we slow it down into slow motion, you can see now that very, very little metal is being removed because this is such a fine cut. Very few sparks. see the shine starting to build. Now time for the last polishing operation. Well this should be the last polishing operation. We've actually spotted a fault on this bumper. So we're just going to brush that area on a size or mop so you can see the fault. Using polishing compounds there. Now, what we spotted was that where the bracket has welded on, it's actually burnt all the way through. Can you see the colour difference? It's right there. Now that's the bracket from behind. Now because that weld is harder than the rest of the material, and it's got some pits in it, the only way we can finish this off is to copper plate it now, to put some, some metal we can work with on top of the surface of the steel. We're just going to knock the edges off this bumper, off of the corners, because when we copper plate it, because it's a high build, those will reform and this prevents it from building up too much. And there it is, ready for copper plating. Now we're in the plating shop. This is the first visit that this bumper and the other parts are going to take to the plating shop. It's going to be wired up onto copper wires so that we can pass a current through it. Now what we're doing at this stage is we're going to put a high build copper on top of this bumper. The reason for it is we've not been able to polish it up to the required standard to give an absolutely superb finish due to those defects from that bracket burning through. If you think of copper doing in plating what a high build primer does in paint, you've about got it. You don't actually need it if you can polish it up to the required standard, but as you know with this bumper we weren't able to. Cleanliness is king in plating. So what's happening here is it's been in a hot soak cleaner and we're going to give it a nice scrub all over to make sure that we remove any traces of grease and dirt. Even though this bumper is thoroughly clean, it's actually not clean enough for plating. What we're doing is we're putting it into a solution of the best cleaner known to man, which has got a lot of cyanide in it, 
and we're going to pass an electric current through it. Now you can see it fizzing away and what it's doing is it's blasting the oxides from off the surface of the metal because as soon as it's been polished it wants to start oxidising and they have to be removed because even if it's slightly oxidised then the plating won't bond to the surface properly. To rinse the soap off we're going to put it through this counterflow rinse system where clean water comes in and then it goes through different weirs and different tanks before it gets treated and goes back out. So here we're going to rinse from the dirtiest water and then work our way along to the clean water. And now it's into the fresh water coming in. But one more thing we've got to do, just in case there's any soap residue, we're going to dip it into a dilute sulfuric acid. This is about as strong as vinegar. So we're going to rinse that off. And now it's going to go into the copper, but we're not immediately going into the high build copper. The reason is the high build copper, which is an acid based copper, can't go directly onto steel because it attacks it. So we're going to put a coat of cyanide based copper on. This is where the, it's a cyanide solution and the copper's dissolved into that solution. You can see it fizzing away instantly as soon as it's put in the tank. After it's plated sufficiently in there, Now this cyanide copper is there just to protect it so that for the first few seconds that it goes into the acid copper it's not being attacked and then the acid copper will plate directly on top of that and the big difference is this cyanide based copper doesn't build to a very good thickness it sort of goes granular and porous and spongy if you try and put too much on but the acid copper goes on lovely, it levels really nicely and it's the ideal thing to put metal back onto a bumper or to build up an imperfect surface like this one. Into the acid copper, we've now just got to alter the power to give us the correct amount of amps for the area of work we've got in the tank. After it's had enough time to build up a sufficient coating, it's time for it to come out. And there it is, all finished, just needs the copper solution rinsing off. and just let the water dry off it so that it's ready for the next polishing process. We're back in the polishing shop and we're about to mop this bumper up to a mirror finish. But before we do that, we're going to remove any buildup from the edges with a fine abrasive. Now that's done, it's time to put on a mop so that we can mop this bumper ready for Nicola Crow.
time to add some polishing compound to the mop. Now we can give it that very, very fine shine. You can see instantly how quickly it's shining up. There is another fault on this bumper that we weren't able to address earlier. It's pretty difficult to capture it with the camera. But where that bracket was welded on, they used too much heat and there is a couple of lines in the bumper where it's deformed. In order to get this out, we've got to use a DA sander. We couldn't do it on the steel because unfortunately the weld is much harder than the raw steel itself. So we've got to wait until it's got a consistent metal like copper on it and now we can gently take those little lumps out so that you won't see them in the finished article. Now that we've taken down those little tiny lumps, we can mop those areas back up so that it's ready for plating. And there it is, all finished. We've just got to wipe it down with some lime so we can inspect it. And then it's back into the plating shop. Now we're in the polishing shop for the final time. The bumper's already been wired up onto copper wires. It's time to get this scrubbed up as before. back into the electric cleaner and we're going to remove the oxides from the surface again by passing an electric current through it. This leaves the surface what we call active so that it's ready to take the plate in. Through the counterflow rinse system again through the dilute acid and then one final rinse in fresh water and then it's going to go into the nickel tank. 
the nickel layer is where all the good looks and weather protection come from. So this is really the most important layer of plating. So adjusting the power to give it an up pounce to plate. Now after it's been in there for an hour or so, it's time to take it out. As you see it almost looks finished already but it's actually got a bit of a yellowy tinge to it because the colour of nickel is a little bit more yellow than chrome. So into the chrome tank we go. Chrome is the plating that takes the most power. It's not a metal that wants to easily plate at all. As it's only a very thin layer, it's only in there for a few minutes. All we need to do now is rinse the chrome solution off. And in this tank, this is a solution that neutralizes chromic acid. So that removes the chromic acid. And then it's just a rinse in some water. is now essentially finished. Now we've got to give these bumpers a wipe over. The water's already dried off them, so a bit of polish and make sure all the watermarks are off so we can see that they are defect free. Now we know that the bumpers are fine, we can remove the wires that we soldered on earlier. Now you can see here, this grey round the edge is what's known as a chrome burn. There's too much chrome in that area and it makes it go grey. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a very soft mop on a polishing spindle and then we are going to polish that off. We're using a very, very fine compound here. The burn is actually all down the edge as well. Sometimes this burn comes off really easily and then other times, like this one, it can be a bit stubborn and take a few minutes to get rid of. Now you can see that all of the chrome burn has been removed. So here's that bumper finished. All the other parts have gone through the same process as that bumper. So here they are, 
going down next to the bumper that you've followed through. And there's the overriders appearing as if by magic. Here's a close-up of what they look like and just a reminder to show you how they started out. If you like what we do, please subscribe to our channel and if you have any chrome work that needs sorting out, then give us a call.